Today we're going to look at coefficients and subscripts and how they contribute to the law of conservation of matter, which is that matter cannot be created or destroyed. So when we're looking at an equation, we have to decide, is it a balanced equation? In other words, do we have the same amount of atoms on the left side, the reactant, as we do on the right side, the product? And sometimes you have models of molecules and elements beneath an equation, and you can sort of check them off to determine if you have the same amount in the reactant as you do in the product. But what if you don't have those models? What if all you have to look at is the equation? This is where a coefficient and subscripts come into the picture, because they tell us how many of each element or each molecule we have in a chemical reaction. So let's take a closer look on how this works. When I look at a chemical equation, the first thing I'm looking at are the elements in that equation. Here I can see I have one carbon element because there's one C at the beginning of this molecule. Next to it, I have an H, but it has a subscript with a 4. This means that I have 4 hydrogen. Our next molecule shows a coefficient of 2. This means that I have 2 oxygen. But with the subscript next to it, it means I have two O2s. And what that looks like when we're looking at it with the model, you can see that there are two O2s. And when there are two, each of the O2 molecules, that's actually giving me four oxygens. So the way it works is when you have a subscript and a coefficient, you multiply them together. And that's going to always be the case. So that's where I'm getting the four oxygen. And now I want to look at an example that has a coefficient, a two. It has an element named the hydrogen. It has a subscript with a two. And it has another element, the oxygen. This is two H2Os. And if you look at a model of the molecule, it's going to look like this. It's going to have four hydrogen and two oxygen because it's two H2Os. So how do we get the four hydrogen? Well, we take the coefficient and we multiply it times the subscript, just like we did before. Two times two is going to give us four hydrogens. Then we take that same coefficient and we distribute it throughout the molecule. So it actually applies to the oxygen as well. That gives us two oxygen for a total of four hydrogen and two oxygen. So now that we know how to determine the number of atoms that are on the reactant and product side of an equation, we ask ourselves, is this a balanced equation? And sometimes we can determine that just by counting off the spheres that are in a model. But what happens when we don't have the spheres or a model representation? Well, that's when we look at the equation, we count the atoms. The way I like to do it is to create a chart. And in that chart, I start by counting the number of atoms and recording them. So in this case, I have the carbon, and I can see that there is one carbon on the reactant side, and I can see that there is one carbon on the product side, so I record them in my chart. Then I can see that there are four hydrogen on the reactant side, and four hydrogen on the product side, and I rec can record them in my chart. Finally, I can see that I have four oxygen on the reactant side, and four oxygen on the product side. Two of the oxygen are here. And there's one oxygen over here, but remember, the coefficient is distributed throughout the molecule. So there actually are two oxygens. So I will record four oxygen in my chart. Finally, we look at the chart. And if the reactant side is the same as the product side, then yes, we have a balanced equation. And of course, a balanced equation proves the law of conservation of matter, because matter was not created or destroyed in this chemical reaction.